All right, everyone, it is time to make supper, and we are making our ravioli lasagna tonight. And I have never made this before, but it's it looks super simple. It's hard to mess it up, I think. And I've never made regular lasagna. Um, so, and I'll tell you, I'm not a fan of Italian food, but this sounds good, so I'm going to try it. Okay, so let's go over the ingredients here. So we have, uh, this is 25 ounce bag of cheese ravioli. And th this is, was a frozen bag. So these were frozen. I have them thawed out now. I'm going to use ground beef. It's a little over a pound. It's probably a pound and a half. Um, for the sauce, I'm going to use Prego pasta sauce. You can use whatever you want, whether you use uh, pasta sauce or marinara sauce or uh, like a basil tomato sauce so whatever you prefer so i'm just going to use this i'm going to cut up an onion i'm going to use some mozzarella cheese for the topping on the very top i'm going to use cottage cheese and you can use cottage cheese or ricotta or ricotto cheese i don't know how do you say it uh, but that's like the normal cheese that goes in lasagna i think but um, we're going to try cottage cheese. It's cheaper. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to use. It's going to be super simple. What I'm going to do is cut up the onion. And I think I'll use the food processor. I just have a small one. And I'll chop up the onion. I'm going to cook it with the meat. And when I drain the meat out of, or the, <laughs> when I drain the grease out of the meat, I'll pour in the prego sauce and let that simmer for a little bit. And then it's just a matter of layering from there. Okay, so stay tuned and let's get this lasagna going. All right, everyone. So right now I'm cooking my ground beef and my onions. Uh, you can see I cut up my onions pretty small. I put them in the little food processor that we have. And you can chop them up to whatever size you want to. Um, I don't care for onions, but I'll put them in the food as long as they're soft and I don't see them. I, as long as I don't see them, I, I'm okay. <laughs> so I usually cut them up pretty small, but it still gives it a good flavor. So, Okay, everyone. So I have now drained the grease out of the ground beef and put the Prego pasta sauce in here. So that's all I did. Um, now I'm going to cover it up and just let it simmer for a little bit. And then we'll be ready to layer in the casserole dish. Okay, everyone, so the meat is simmered in the prego sauce, so, and it smells good, too. All right, so we're going to start layering now. And if you hear a little noise, that's my little uh, tabletop fan going. It's so warm in the kitchen. Anytime I put the, the oven on, it just gets warm in here. So I like to have my little uh, fan going. Okay, so the first thing we, we're going to do, again, I'm only using an 8x8 depending on your family size or how many people you're serving you want to determine how much meat you make and and things like that so first thing you want to do is just put a couple of spoonfuls at the bottom before you layer it with raviolis and that's so the ravioli don't stick to the bottom I probably could have uh, sprayed non-stick but I'll just put this on there so, okay, so that's just so the raviolis don't stick. All right, so now we're going to go with our first layer. And these are all thought out. These are cheese raviolis. You can get meat raviolis. And these are not from the can. These are from the bag again. They were frozen. want to layer your uh, casserole dish like I said before I'm not one for uh, Italian food is not my favorite so when it comes to like lasagnas I'm very picky about it um, spaghetti is the most Italian food I eat and uh, yeah I'm, I've just never been one to I like, cared for uh, Italian food but I do like some lasagnas and some I don't. So if I 
figure if I make this and I like it, then that could be my type of lasagna. So my oven is preheated to 350 and I'm going to bake this for about 35, 40 minutes, somewhere around there. Now you can bake it for uh, 30 minutes at a higher heat. Um, some people can go, will go uh, like 400. I'm just going to stick to the 350, all right? So there's my first layer. And now I'm going to put a generous layer of my uh, meat. Depending on how many, how much meat you got, I guess, <laughs> how generous you want to be with that. Because as you can see, there's going to be enough for another layer. Ooh. Man, I am so mixed up on my days. I'm thinking it's a weekend. <laughs> it's only Wednesday. My days are so messed up. So my kitchen stuff arrived in the mail today and I'll show you guys that. Alright, so there's my layer of meat and now I'm going to top it with cottage cheese. Again, if you want to use uh, ricotta, 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 ricotta cheese, I think that's what it's called. I never use this stuff, so I don't know. And I'm not quite sure how much of this to put on either. Glenn likes cottage cheese, so he probably won't mind. Yeah, when I looked at the price of ricotta cheese versus cottage cheese, I'm like, oh, that's a no-brainer. Okay, so there's my cottage cheese. And now I'm going to layer it with more raviolis. Yeah, today I just got as far as cutting the front, but there was so much trimming to be done because I hadn't done it in a while, and then all of a sudden we got a ton of rain for like days, so everything just grew like crazy. So I trimmed all of the front, I cut the front, then I cleaned off the grass off the driveway and the sidewalk, like I said earlier. I think I said that. And then I plan on doing the backyard tomorrow when it's supposed to be cooler. It's only supposed to be 69 degrees tomorrow. And I'm sure some of you who are uh, panting at heat right now would love to see that 69 degrees or feel that 69 degrees. Alright, there's that, and now I'm going to throw the rest of the uh, ground beef mix on there. It's going to taste good. Well, <clears throat> oh, this is perfect. The perfect amount of meat. So, I'm guessing I had like a little over a pound. Maybe between a pound and a quarter. quarter uh, one and a quarter pound to a pound and a half. Because when I broke up that three pound meat, I kind of gave one pack a little bit more. I think this was the pack. Just wipe up my little mess here. Feeding the counter. Alright, so now I'm going to throw some cottage cheese on there. And I can't believe I used to make 
cast rows in the 9 by 13 dish. The bigger, the bigger one, I think it's a 9 by 13. I used to make cast rows in that when it's just two of us. But we would have leftovers for like three days. And honestly, we don't like to eat that much leftovers. Like we eat leftovers, but we by the third day, no, <laughs> probably not, not good. Unless it's like chili or beef stew or something. But now I'm freezing a lot more stuff, so we'll eat it like two days and then I'll freeze what's left for another day. All right, I hope this doesn't uh, boil over. Okay, so now I am gonna throw the mozzarella on. And I'm gonna bake this, like I said, for uh, at 350 for 35 to 40 minutes and then I'm going to take it out I'm going to cover it up for that time and then I'm going to take it out and bake it for another 15 minutes or so uncovered so the top of the cheese gets a little like brown color and a little crispy Okay, so I'm going to cover this, get it in the oven, and we'll be back in about 35-40 minutes. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention, when you cover the lasagna, because you have cheese on top, there's a good chance that the cheese is going to stick to the foil. Unless you have like a non-stick foil. I've never seen it, but I heard there's such a thing. But I'm just going to spray it with the non-stick spray. So hopefully that keeps uh, the cheese from sticking. Okay, so, all right, I'm going to put it in the oven now. All right, everyone, so um, in just a few minutes, the oven or the timer is going to go off for me to take the lasagna out, and it'll be 35 minutes, so I'll check it at that. But meanwhile, um, I do want to get some uh, garlic bread in the oven and I'm gonna make it out of our rolls and if you recall I had that big pack of rolls that I bought on Sunday so I'm trying to get every use I can out of them right now so I'm just gonna make garlic bread on these rolls we've done it before and they do taste good so these rolls have lots of use you can make pizza on them garlic bread sandwiches Glenn likes all his sandwiches on rolls. I prefer just sandwich bread, but this is good for garlic bread. When you toast it, it gets real, like a real soft crisp. Just throw some butter on there, throw some garlic powder on there, and throw it in the oven. So I'll put them in the oven when I put the lasagna back in without the cover. Super simple garlic bread. Sometimes we make it out of sandwich bread and what, like when we have spaghetti, we'll just make it out of regular sandwich bread. And if we have rolls, I'll just make it out of rolls too. Alright, I'm going to turn the fan off so it doesn't blow the garlic powder on me. Alright, so I'll just put some garlic powder. And that's it. I'll throw them in the oven when I put the lasagna back in, and that'll be our garlic bread. All right, everyone, so we are going to uncover this together. It's been 35 minutes, and see, let's see how it looks. It feels like the cheese might be sticking, and I know it's dripping over. Yeah, looks like the cheese stuck. Not too bad. Oh, it's not too bad. All right, so that's what it looks like. Kind of looks like a mess. <laughs> Just gonna get a spoon and kind of scrape all this cheese over. 
because now we're gonna put it back in without the cover so it can bake the cheese but it looks good and this could be Glenn's corner because he doesn't like a lot of cheese Alright, I'm just going to get a piece of paper towel to wipe the edges, and we'll get it back in. Alright, so I'm going to put this back in the oven now, and I'm also, I put a piece of tin foil in on the rack in the oven, so I can put my garlic bread on there. So, yeah, let's get this done so we can eat supper. All right, everyone, so here is my ravioli lasagna, my first attempt. Um, it got quite messy, uh, probably because I overloaded the casserole dish. I probably should have used a little bit bigger one or not put as much stuff in. So just take that, and uh, if you try it, just uh, remember that. So it started, uh, you can see, overflowing the sides. So I ended up putting it on top of a cookie sheet so it doesn't drip all down to the oven. <clears throat> so you can see the cheese where it's browned so that's good um so the total cook time or the bake time i would say is an hour i had it for 35 minutes covered and then 15 minutes uncovered and then i did it for an additional additional 10 minutes so I would say a total, I did 25 minutes uncovered, 35 minutes covered. So, so yeah, there it is. Um, it looks good. It looks, it's messy. It looks uh, a little messy, but it looks good. So I'm going to attempt to cut this and plate this, and I will be right back. Okay, so instead of doing this without uh, taking video of it, I'm just going to do it on video so you can see how it comes out um, and that's basically <laughs> uh, I'm guessing it might be a little sloppy I'm gonna just cut this in fours I'm going to give Glenn, I'm getting Glenn's plate ready first. I'm going to give him the piece with the most uh, brown cheese because he likes that. But he doesn't like a lot of cheese. So, oh well. He gets, I guess he can't do it both ways. Alright, so I'm going to try to get this out. I'm surprised that it actually came out like that. And you can see there's still a lot oozing there. But that's uh, basically what it looks like. I'm going to give them some more of the stuff in here. Yeah, it doesn't come out real neat, but it does look good. So we'll see what it tastes like. All right, I'm just going to move this out. And yeah, I wanted to record it coming out of the casserole dish so you can see um, that it's messy. <laughs> Yours may be different. Yours may come out a lot nicer or not overflow as much as mine, depending on how much stuff you put in it. So, all right, I'm going to get his garlic bread. All right, folks, so there it is, ravioli lasagna with some garlic bread, and that's it. So I'm going to take this to Glenn, and we're going to enjoy our supper, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, so I took Glenn his plate, and he tasted it before I even left the garage, so I kind of got his opinion. Uh, Glenn has a 
quite the palette um, for taste. So his opinion was he thought the raviolis were a little thick, which it's possible that they do look pouchy. <laughs> um, but he said it could use more salt and pepper, which I gave it to him, and some Parmesan cheese, which I gave to him. So other than that, I'm going to eat mine now, and I'll give my opinion of it. All right, stay tuned. All right, everyone, so I am in the middle of eating my uh, my dinner here, my ravioli lasagna, and it looks like a little bit of a mess, but that's okay because it tastes delicious. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. It tastes delicious, I think. Yeah, I really like the taste of it. Uh, the raviolis, I don't think they're too bad at all. And uh, the garlic bread is good. It's just a little cold because it didn't get t done at the same time as the lasagna did. And so now I know better uh, as the time frame for next time. But I do have some uh, Parmesan cheese on mine. And I did give some to Glenn as well. He's eating out in the garage. He's still working on stuff. I'm in the house. Um, we are having applesauce. And I have a bottle of water that I'm drinking with mine. So, yeah, I don't think it's bad at all. I definitely would make this again. Um, and you can add anything to your meat. Uh, if you want, like, bell peppers or whatever you want. Any Italian seasonings to make it more Italian-ish. Um, but I like it. I really do like it. And I would make it again. So, so yeah, keep in mind uh, how big of a dish you want to use as to how much... Uh, stuff you're going to put in it. Um, mine definitely overflowed <laughs> and became a mess, but that's okay. It tastes good. So, all right, I'm going to finish my meal and we'll be back. All right, everyone. So, as you can see, we have half of the lasagna left. And I actually think these are bigger pieces than the ones we ate. So, again, uh, I thought it was good. and to, And that's actually to my surprise because... I don't like raviolis, um, the ones in the can, but these were actually not too bad. I didn't think so. So I like the dish. Uh, Glenn did not care for the raviolis. He would like to try lasagna with the normal pasta sheets. So, but we have enough for leftovers tomorrow night. He did say he'll eat it. Um, and he's good about that. So he might just take out some of the raviolis and eat what's left so again uh first time trying it i thought it was good so so yeah we'll see uh how we make it in the future so i'm gonna get this put away and i'm gonna bring on the items i ordered for the kitchen um they're, it's no big deal it's just a couple of things so all right stay tuned all right everyone so i am going to open up the products that i ordered for the kitchen um so this I'm guessing is the 8x8 stainless steel dish. I have not opened up these things prior to right now. And it comes with a lid as well. That's pretty good sturdy plastic. Oh yeah, 8x8 eight eight stainless steel. And again, the reason I wanted this um, is when I grill out and like uh, restaurant steaks or brats or anything, uh, what I usually would put them in is our stainless steel bowl, which is really big. And I just wanted something small for that because I don't grill out a whole bunch of stuff and the bowl is kind of overkill. So, so I just wanted something smaller in this. This is like, I think, two inches. And then with the lid on it, it's another another inch or so. So I think that's going to be perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So, I mean, you can use it for baking. Brownies, cake, whatever. But when I grill out, that's going to be perfect. I can put the lid right on it instead of having to tear off tin foil and putting it on there. So that's great. All right. Let me get to the next item. 
All right, here's the next item. Uh, these are the flexible cutting mats. So basically, um, flexible cutting boards, mats, whatever you want to call them. But there's a set of three, three colors, and they're 12 inches by 15 inches. So let's open these up. I like that they're that big. Oh. So we got a green one. Oh, that's yellow. <laughs> On top of the blue, it made it look green. So that's yellow, blue, and kind of like a hot pink. Let's see. Yeah, they slide pretty good. They do sell some that uh, have uh, one side where it's a uh, it'll keep it from sliding so we'll see how these work out i did get everything everything through um amazon prime so if i don't like the way they're working out i will send it back and maybe look for the ones that don't slide so yeah three cutting boards uh the cutting boards i have now i have one blue one one white one the white one is from the dollar tree and i've had it for well over a year and but now it's starting to show some wear where the plastic is lifting and catching on to stuff so i think uh it served its purpose for a dollar <laughs> so time to get new mats and i want to keep something in the in the camper so so yeah uh, these are supposed to be dishwasher safe and we don't have a dishwasher except me so i guess that doesn't matter <laughs> All right, here's the last thing, uh, Mr. Coffee Tea Kettle. And again, I wanted it for like uh, in the fall and winter or whenever we have hot drinks um, and I warm up, uh, boil some water in a saucepan, I end up just dumping it all over the counter as I'm pouring it. So I hope the tea kettle solves that problem. Um, I noticed there's a little, uh, kind of pops through a little bit. So let's get it opened up. So it is uh, stainless steel and it's got a plastic handle. That spout's not that long, so I'm hoping it. That's how it works. So you just lift that up, pour it. All right, so this is 1.5 quarts. Uh. Yeah, nothing special. And all of these items were fairly uh, cheap in price. I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money. But still want to get some of the things I've been wanting to get. So, Alright, so that is it. That's the three items. Now I did take my, uh, return my item back to Amazon today. I, take it, I took it to the UPS store. And Amazon has already uh, sent my, uh, my refund to my account. So I may buy that set of knives, may or may not. <laughs> um, I thought they were like $16. They're actually like $22 or $23. But I think it's like four or five knives, different colors, and the blades are colored. And it comes with a cutting board as well. Not the flexible matte ones, but a regular cutting board. So um, I may order that. I may not. We'll see. If I do, I, I think I have to pay like $13. So, anyway, those are the items I got from Amazon. And I've wanted some items for the kitchen for a while now since uh, uh, the kitchen and I have become very close friends. <laughs> I spend a good por part of my day in the kitchen. Um, so, yeah, I kind of like to have some stuff, you know. <laughs> All right. So let me uh, just get all three here. So here are all the items I uh, ordered. 8x8 eight eight stainless steel dish, three colored flexible cutting mats, and a stainless steel tea kettle. So 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this video out here. I think it's a good spot to close it out. And it's been a long day. So I'm getting ready to go to bed. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Um, I really enjoyed making this video as well as all my other videos. So thank you so much for your support. So remember to live life. Be good to yourself and be good to others. Until next time.